So it's mid-August right now and my garden phlox is still blooming really nice as well as the coneflowers and the, there's a butterfly right there, as well as the Russian sage and it's just all looking really good. Some of the other flowers are starting to get tired but yeah it's, uh, it's definitely a butterfly season. I have several different colors of tall garden phlox in the garden and I had a second flush of blooms on my definiums. So there's a definium there. Some definiums here. This is a second flush of blooms. This variety is the Fantasia. So it's a little bit shorter variety. It only gets about three feet tall including the spike. We continue to walk through the garden here. You can see the uh, tall garden flock is looking pretty good so finally I got the deer to stop nibbling on it. Enough uh, sprays of deer away and it, it helped them do really well. Bees are just crazy on this Russian sage. It's looking really good. Yeah I don't know if you can hear the bees but they are absolutely crazy on this Russian sage right now. They're all over. So we'll keep walking down. So I've this is my butterfly weed, the beautiful orange flowers on it, and they're starting to go into the seed phase, which I'm gonna come and deadhead because I really don't want more of this around. So these are the seed pods here. So we're gonna help them go away. And if we look carefully, we will see there are lots of monarch caterpillars on this milkweed or butterfly weed. What we're going to talk about is if you have a small garden space, what is kind of the minimum flowers that you need in order to bring in the butterflies? Well, there's two things the butterflies need. They need food and they need a place to nest or to lay their eggs. And one of the flowers that I think, as I sit and watch, that no matter what type of butterfly it is, they love this tall garden flox. So again, the butterflies need food, so they get food from the milkweed or the butterfly weed when it's in flower like this, and then of course they have a place to lay their eggs. I'm trying to keep my eye out for more caterpillars. I've seen a lot of them lately. Variety here, which is just the green leaves, is called the swamp milkweed. This is the most common wild milkweed we have, I think, in North America. And this is a different variety uh, of milkweed or butterfly weed with the orange flowers. And it has an orange flower for quite a long time as compared to the swamp milkweed or the traditional milkweed. Here's another bunch of tall garden phlox and then I have Leatris behind it which I need to deadhead it's kind of at the end of its bloom and then we have some cone flowers all different kinds of cone flowers in the garden so this is definitely an autumn looking garden at this point these are my tall hibiscus which have got a lot of blooms on them I need to come through and deadhead the beetles are wrecking havoc with them unfortunately these giant hibiscus are just really, really lovely. And I'm always amazed that I can grow these in zone four since they look so tropical. This is a perennial variety for our zone. I think a lot of times this is referred to as Rosa Sharon as well, although I'm not 100% sure. And this plant does come with multiple colors. This just happens to be the color that I've got. Just to give you an idea of how big this flower is, here's my hand underneath it. It is absolutely massive. So the butterflies will come in and they love all of this different flocks that I've got, but I see them land on the coneflowers as well. Usually when I do the garden tour, I like to do a pan view. So I'm gonna kind of go and do that right now to show the garden. So this is a mid-August garden and we can see kind of what's blooming. Some things are finished, some things are looking pretty tired, but the butterfly stuff is still going strong.
we sit still for just a while we can see different butterflies coming into the frame. They love that milkweed because of course they need a place to lay eggs. See lots of butterflies coming and going. There's some more. They come in and then they get a little something to eat. They'll come and get a little something to eat and then maybe find a mate and do some and lay some eggs. Monarchs are all over the garden today. It's really interesting to watch them. This is the final push between now and the first frost. Sometimes we have the first frost early September. Here we have a little butterfly that's landed on some of the swamp milkweed. Probably going to lay their eggs. Usually they lay eggs on the bottom side of the leaves. So this side of the garden is starting to look pretty tattered. It needs to probably be uh, tear out some of the stuff that's done. Do some deadheading on this phlox and it will come again. There we want another butterfly. This area here has more spring bulbs in it. It's quite narrow, so only the tulips and stuff come through. I might put a hydrangea or something else in there to give it a little bit more interest this time of year. I do have some other plants to put in here. I just haven't gotten to it yet. This is a traditional purple coneflower and it's looking quite tired. I probably should dig it up and divide it up too. As I get towards the exit of the garden I have this oriental lily, this really pretty white one. It should be highly fragrant. Um, it's one of my last ones to bloom. It's really pretty with the purple and the blue definium behind it too. If this video is helpful give us a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this content with others. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss any of our other great videos. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.